back to my channel. So I uh, just want to do a real quick uh, do-it-yourself video today and um, piggy banks. Big thing for little toddlers, kids. Yeah. So I actually did this project myself because my daughter is only 13 months. However, this is a great project if your kid is old enough to help you with it or actually you help your child with it. And um, works great. You can use it to save, uh, you know, teach them how to save money for little toys that they want or little other um, scenarios where you're actually trying to teach them the importance of money. And um, it's a very important concept and hard to teach, but I think it is a more, you know, sometimes you buy your kids a piggy bank based on a cartoon character or a theme that they're really fond of and that interests them. So if not something that they're fond of, if you actually get something they've worked on themselves and put time into, it actually does become something that they own and they would be enjoying working with it, such as saving money and then eventually buying something they like and knowing that they've worked towards it from, you know, stage one to all the way till the end. So let's go ahead and get started. And before that, if you haven't subscribed to my video, do subscribe and don't forget to like my video if you like the project. Another point I do want to make is a crochet um, that I have used. I am not making a crochet video because simply this is a do-it-yourself uh, piggy bank project. So um, there are a lot of videos out there that allow you to you know, use their pattern, free patterns on uh, crochets for mason jars. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, for this project, you're gonna need a mason jar. You probably have one laying around the house. If not, I picked this one up at Michael's. I also bought this at Michael's. It's a mason jar lid with a coin insert, acrylic paint, whatever you colors you prefer, some paint brushes, um, assorted whatever you're comfortable using, and ribbon, which is optional. To start off, we're gonna paint the base of the mason jar with a color of your choice, any color you like. I picked a purple color, um, a little darker than lavender, but not too dark of a purple, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the base all around. I am painting the outside, not the inside, only because as I put the coins in, it is definitely gonna chip. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it all around, and I'll meet you at the corner. As you can see, I've almost uh, completed painting my mason jar with the purple color. I'm going to set it down to dry and be right back. Okay guys, so now it's a little dry, but I do see a little few gaps here and there where I wasn't able to hold a jar properly or um, while I set it down, as you can see at the bottom, it hasn't really caught the paint very well. So I'm going to go ahead and retouch all the places where I think it needs to go over possibly do a second coat if you feel like your first coat is too light. And as I complete my second coat, I will set it down once again for it to dry and be right back. So guys, as you can see, the mason jar is now completely dry. I have no paint touching my hands whatsoever. It's not wet at all. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take some masking tape and actually uh, put it on in horizontal lines. Feel free to get creative, use your imagination, whatever design or pattern you, you would like. You can paint, put the masking tape on in that pattern. I'm actually just going to make some lines going up and down. So here I am. I have put the masking tape all around as I wanted and lines going up and down. I'm going to go ahead and take the brush and put my second color. I'm using a turquoise blue. Depending on the color you choose to put on, you might need two or even three coats. I needed two coats, uh, but you might want three if your color is too light and it doesn't overpower the base color. And uh, if you've chosen to do three, make sure you do apply the second and third coat after the first coat and the second coat have completely dried out. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my blue color all around and I will meet you once I'm done. Now that I'm completely done with the paint, I'm going to set it down to dry, time it out overnight, a couple of hours. Here you see it's all dry. 
There is again no wet paint, nothing sticking to my hands. Once you're sure everything is dry, go ahead and start removing the masking tape from the mason jar very slowly and gently making sure you don't take off any excess paint. So, as I'm removing the masking tape, I don't know if you can notice, but there is a little bit of paint that actually did come off. And I could leave it as is just to give it a very antique rustic look if that's what you like. If not, we can always go ahead and retouch the paint wherever there is missing paint. And that's what I'm going to do just to make sure um, I don't see any of the jar or the coins through the jar. Once the paint is all dry again, we're going to go ahead and swap out the lids as we're ready for that step. Cha-ching guys! Your mason jar is all ready, set to go. You can go ahead and start using it as is. You can embellish it with some mason jar crochet covers or cozies as they are called. Green for a neutral, pink for a girl, or even blue for a boy. If you choose, you can always accessorize with ribbons, other accessories that you like, and go ahead and enhance the jar to your liking.